Hey guys, it's Kathleen with Thrifty Bridges and I am back after being gone for two weeks while COVID kicked my butt. So I'm um, sorry I haven't dropped a video in, like I said, two weeks, but I am back and I was able to go thrifting this past weekend, even though it was not the best of experiences. You know how it is when it's not yard sale season and you're trying to make it happen and it's just not there. So I did go to one yard sale and an estate sale I'll show you the footage and then come on back for the haul.
Okay, so at the first stop, the only thing that I picked up was this lot of 12 sealed in the package cards. And I, you know, I could tell by looking at the stuff that was at the sale that this was a bunch of resellers. And so I, that should have been my indicator. To be honest, the only reason I picked up 12 of them is because they were only a dollar a piece. And I'm always looking for things to throw into my um, treasure box at school. So I figured, well, worst case scenario, if they're completely worthless, then I will just use them as prizes. So I did bring some of them into school, but some of them have some merit. So there's this one, this two pack and it's NASCAR and they're all vintage. One to 64 is the um, scale. And um, I wanna say they're from like 93 or something like that. They're all different years, but all of them were in the 90s. So, like these two, I'm going to lot together. And I'll flash the, um, not the comps, because I could not find comps for the exact cars. Like, I could find this brand of car, but not for the driver. And so, I'll just flash up there what I listed them for. I put those two together. And then I listed... Bobby Alice, no, these stock car ones. So this is um, 1995 and this is 1993. I mean, let me know in the comments if you know anything about these die cast stock car thingies. But anyway, I don't think that I'm going to make terribly much money. Um, I do think I'm going to make my $12 back. Um, but beyond that, I don't think I'm going to get rich off of these cars. I thought for a hot minute about offering him like 30 bucks for all of them. And then I was like, well, why are you doing that? Because you know already he's a reseller. He's not selling any of these cars for a dollar a piece that are going to be worth much more on eBay. So there went the end of that idea. So then I went on to an estate sale and it was the last day of the estate sale. So I have heard about Louis L'Amour books as being something that is a desirable item. So they look like this. These are like vintage Westerns. And so he was a really prolific writer in the 60s and the 70s. Um, and just 
churned out like so many books, hundreds and hundreds of books. And so I gathered all the Louis L'Amour books that I could find because they were only 50 cents a piece. And I thought, surely she'll make me a deal on that. Well, then I get up to check out and she goes, um, no, all the Louis L'Amour ones are a dollar a piece. And I said, oh, forget it. And that's not worth it to me. And she said, well, I have somebody who's coming back at the end of the sale and he said he would give me a dollar a book, so I really can't go lower. And I said, oh, okay, well then he'll be really happy because I have already boxed them all up together. So this is just like a handful of the ones I have. I've already got 48 of them that I have lotted up together and listed. Um, I don't know a whole lot about them, so I'm not really sure how to divide them up into lots, but I'm doing the best I can. I'd love to hear from any of you that have ever had any luck with these books because I'm thinking that this might potentially be a big lemon. Now, after I said to her, you know, I've, I've already boxed them up so he'll be real happy. She said, well, wait a minute, you know, let's talk about this. Um, and she goes, well, what would you pay for them? And they were about 150 bucks. I said, $60. And she said, 65. So I said, deal. So I took them for 65 and then I went to pay her and I only had $64 in my wallet. So I actually got them all for $64. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm ever gonna make my money back or if I'm just gonna end up donating them, but it was something that I wanted to try to see if I could have any luck with these Westerns. It's not an author that I've ever read before that I'm familiar with, but I know he does have a following. So we shall see, jury is still out. Um, I've got one lot listed for $48. I got a second lot listed of this other author that was in there. Um, I'll flash it up because his name's escaping me right now. That looked like he was selling. Um, and then I still have about a hundred more books to go through and to lot and photograph and list. So in hindsight, it seems like not my best idea, but we'll see what happens. All right, I grabbed this dandy hippo. How cute is he? He's huge. He's 27 inches. He looks to be vintage, but on his tush tag, there's no year. Um, I saw a lot of hippos that were smaller who did not have a mouth that was open. It was kind of just like stitched on that were selling for like 25 to $30. So I listed him at $48. I, I'm thinking I'm going to get him. I just think he's going to be a long tail item. Um, I've had a lot of luck selling Dandy in the past, so um, I usually do pick it up when I can get it at a good price. Now, I thought that he was only going to be $5 and he was 10 and I still took him just because he was so unique and I didn't see any like him that were listed, so fingers crossed. Okay, another Dandy. I just liked it. I liked that it looked kind of tie-ish. I liked that it, you know, tie beanie baby-ish. I liked that he had a muff and a Santa hat and all the things. Also, dandy collection. Um, this was a flop. So I paid only $3 for him. Um, and he's not likely going to bring me much more than $8 if I'm lucky. So that was definitely a fail. Okay, she um, at this sale, she also had all the Beanie Babies listed for a dollar a piece. So a dollar is my threshold. I won't pay more than a dollar for a Beanie Baby. But some of the more unique ones that she had, I wanted to give a shot to. And also she had a ton of the um, punkies. So I also wanted to give them a shot. I picked her up just because I absolutely loved her, everything about her. And she's, you know, you can see all of these Beanie Babies are um, preserved with their tags. When I looked her up, she's not going for much of anything, but that's okay. I'll just keep her because I kind of like her. I'll drag her out at Halloween in my classroom and the kids will love it. Okay, I grabbed these three because they are Kelly toys. They are like some vintage version of Kelly toys. And if you remember, Kelly toys are the folks that do the Squishmallows. And so these guys are vintage, new old stock with their tags. And they had a surprising sell-through rate. They seemed to sell pretty decently for what I paid for them. I only paid a dollar a piece for them. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to get somewhere between $15 and $20 for the three of them. I lotted them up together. Okay, I bought a bunch of these punkies. So this is what the tag looks like. 
Um, and the best way to describe them is that they just have these fuzzies on them, the punkies. There was a lady there who was grabbing up all the Beanie Babies she could, and I noticed that she had grabbed a bunch of the punkies but missed a box. And so always wanting to be the cutthroat at the estate sale, I ran over and got the box. And so these were all in that box of punkies. This is four of the teddy bears. So these teddy bears sell for about $10 a piece. Um, and I lotted all four of them up together. I have a brown one, I have rainbow, I have Twizzler, and I have Sizzle. Then I have all of these farm animals. So cow, dog, giraffe. So I just lotted these all up together. These have a variety of price points on them when I looked at sold comps. So I'm thinking that I'm probably going to get approximately $40 for the entire lot of these farm animals. The pig, the pig is a little bit more valuable. She goes, she goes a little bit higher, but they're really so cute. Um, the frog, I have sold him before and um, I think his name is Hopscotch, but I mean, they are just darling. Look at this little giraffe, how cute is that? Um, so I thought it was worth giving it a stab for only a dollar a piece. And then I lotted two ducks up together. These ducks seem to sell pretty well. So I'm anticipating I'm going to get about 20 bucks for the lot of them together. So I spent about $18. I think I have 18 different Beanie Babies. And so I think I'm going to turn that into between 60 and $80 dollars. Which, like I said, is definitely not my best pickup ever, but also not my worst. I don't know. Let me know in the comments how you're finding sourcing these days. To me, it's a chore. It has been really, really hard. There are just no yard sales to be found. I do not like thrift stores. I just don't have any great thrift stores near me. The only time I've had any luck sourcing in thrift stores is usually when I go to visit Karen in Atlanta. And just because I've been sick and just life, I haven't gotten over to Atlanta, so I haven't been hitting up the Goodwills. But I also don't love the prices at Goodwill, so I really need for yard sale season to start. Hopefully, hopefully, within the next couple of weeks, we're gonna start seeing some warm weather trends and start seeing some um, yard sales popping up. All right, guys, that's everything for this video. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to our channel. And remember, it's not cheap, it's thrifty. Bye, guys.